So this is a pretty contentious situation. In fact, I was, I was driving in. I think I was listening to either YouTube or Spotify. Disney's actually running ads reminding shareholders they have to vote by April the 2nd. I want to get into this with you. Uh, you're clearly on the Disney side based on the article. Your news article cites the performance of Disney under Iger since you return up 27 percent over the other peers. Where did this myth of a lack of stock performance in your mind, where did it come from? It came from uh, the uh, the master of illusion. You know, you've got a you've got a genuine wizard here. Of course, this is Bob Iger, but then you've got Nelson Peltz, who has an amazing way with his locker room bravado, his distraction, and his comically uh, 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 long tirades on on media to uh, uh, give you a lot of false data. So it's, you know, because he, he wants to distract from his own performance. Peltz, he's been down in 80% of all the boards he's been on, 22 boards. Uh, he's been down like 15 of them, well below the S&P, consistently. The only places that performed under him at all were the few places he served on the board because they didn't listen to him at Procter & Gamble and GE. Uh, they they kind of okay. just ignored him. So, 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 uh, so but, Jeff, it sounds like the bottom line is you think the underperformance critique is actually backwards. You, you believe that Nelson Pelt should be criticized for underperformance in the companies that he's involved with. Frank, that, that's exactly right. right. I, I, should, uh, I should be asking you the questions. Your, your, your response is so much better than mine. <laughs> the, the, the myths there are, 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 are ridiculous. The, it, he says that, that, I, that Iger and Disney underperforming. Uh, it's, they're soaring okay. past their media peers. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, up 20, 27 percent. They're actually up now 30 percent thanks to the UBS upgrade and okay. all the rest. And this has nothing to do with being stalked by pelts. Uh, UBS didn't upgrade with anything having to do with okay. pelts. I want to go to one of your other myths. Uh, according to your article, there's another myth that Bob Iger has overpaid for acquisitions. So uh, we're going to look at, we're going to show the audience some of your research here. Uh, according to your research, Disney has tripled its investment in Marvel, much more than that when it comes to Pixar. That's what I think of as kind of tent poles of the Disney content empire. Um, is that critique fair, however, when we talk about the acquisition of the Fox assets? That's kind of a different story. And you, you got some math there that you say makes it all make sense. Yes, drive them to the Time Magazine article in case it gets too dense uh, for, oh my gosh, good for you that you have it there, is that the money that they pulled in by selling right away uh, uh, Sky, uh, uh, you know, they got fifteen uh, uh, billion dollars for that. Got eleven billion dollars uh, uh, for selling off the uh, regional sports network, uh, selling uh, uh, to arts and entertainment, selling selling that off to, to Hearst. Uh, they've got uh, great valuation in uh, a big Indian operation, a star. They've, they've about uh, I don't know, twelve billion dollars there. The Hulu valuation is $12 billion. This starts to add up after a while before you even get to these incredible franchises that they get uh, in the deal here as too. Some of their some of their hottest property, which has come in. So this has been quite valuable. It's actually probably worth, oh, well, easily $74 billion. And they paid 71 okay. on it. So it's hard to say this is a bad deal. But uh, Nelson Peltz uh, confuses the math just the, like he confuses Bob Chapek's term of office with Bob Iger's when he, when he calculates things. Okay. And Jeff, by the way, you can't be that surprised we have the graphic. You're on CNBC all the time. We're prepared. Come on, man. <laughs> you, you really? Um, but at this hour, Frank, I don't know how you do it. It's right. fantastic. So, so coming up, uh, we obviously have the shareholder meeting. Again, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing ads when I'm listening to the radio uh, that Disney wants to remind shareholders they have to vote by April the 2nd. What are your expectations? Uh, this, these myths that you're talking about, do you think that leads to a victory for Nelson Peltz or does Disney win out in this situation? Uh, Disney is going to win out. You, you take a look at the incredible people, uh, uh, such as George Lucas, maybe the largest owner, and uh, uh, taking a look at Miss Disney uh, and the great legacy there. Taking a, you know all, all these great folks who've, who've lined up behind them, not to mention uh, you know Jamie Dimon. Or this is an all-star board that it's, I can't, in fact, imagine a, a stronger board out there with Mary Barra of GM, Safra Katz of, of Oracle, and Mark Parker. Uh, 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 you know, of, of Nike uh, and uh, James Gorman and J.P. Morgan. Uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's, so that's uh, I, I, Carolyn Everson, who let, okay. let Instacart. It's a very strong board, but they also have a great team there, a bench squad. If some crisis right now, they needed to pick a CEO, they've got a half a dozen people they could almost randomly pick from the people who are in the management team and people working with Iger. It's the dream team of media folks.